Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Andrea Tarowski here with Dental L. Let's study the heart together. So let's learn how that blood flows, how the heart pumps. We're going to talk about the ventricles, the the atrium. We're going to talk about the left side, the right side, deoxygenated blood, oxygenated blood, but we're going to keep it simple. So if the heart is confusing, having to memorize all of those different chambers, I'm going to make it so much easier for you. So definitely stay tuned. So let me share my screen here and let's just jump right into it. So I have a cool little video for you. So we all know what the heart is and that's what we're going to go through in this video today. We're going to study it together. So all of that confusion, I'm going to give you some kind of memorizing tips to kind of help to memorize it because whether you're studying for an exam in, in your school program, either dental assisting, dental hygiene, even another professional altogether, this is just going to break it down, keep it simple. There are 17 slides here, not many. We're going to keep it simple. So, okay, so let's go over the heart chambers. So you have the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the left ventricle. But let me give you something to really help you memorize this. So think about the right side handles deoxygenated blood, whereas the left side, it receives oxygenated blood, okay? So let me actually zoom in a bit more for you. So can you guys see that a little bit better? There. So let's see here. Let me move my face a little bit. So the right atrium receives deoxygenated blood from the body via the, the superior and the inferior vena cava, whereas the right atrium is going to pump deoxygenated blood to the lungs through the pulmonary artery for oxygenation. So right side handles deoxygenated blood, but the atrium is what's going to receive things. The ventricle is what pumps things. So if you notice from this image here, and I do have a larger one for you to see later, you pay close attention to where the atrium is and then the ventricles. So the atrium up here, whereas the ventricles are lower down. So the atrium is always higher and the ventricles are lower. Right side, see how it's red? And then you have the left side is more so blue, okay? So the left side receives or pumps the oxygenated blood, whereas the right side receives or pumps deoxygenated blood. So I'm just going to move on here and kind of explain the rest. So the right ventricle pumps deoxygenated blood to the lungs through the pulmonary artery for oxygenation. Left ventricle receives, so I'm down here now, left Atrium receives oxygenated blood from the lungs via the pulmonary veins. The left ventricle pumps oxygenated blood to the rest of the body through the aorta. Don't worry, towards the end, I actually have this laid out for you. Step one, step two, step three. So we will talk about that. But right now, pay attention also to where the aorta is. We just mentioned the aorta with the left ventricle. And pay attention to where the, the superior vena cava is up here and the inferior vena cava is down here. Okay, so moving on for now. So veins and arteries, we're going to talk about this as well. What are the functions of the veins versus what is the function of the artery? So veins are going to carry blood towards the heart, collecting deoxygenated blood. Most veins transport deoxygenated blood except for the pulmonary veins. So remember that the pulmonary is different. Either the pulmonary veins and the pulmonary arteries, they're different than what their main function is. So I'm going to read that again. So most veins um, transport deoxygenated blood except the pulmonary veins. And then you have the pulmonary veins deliver oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left atrium. And remember, towards the end, I have these step by step for you for really easy studying. But then now moving on to the arteries. So arteries carry blood away from the heart to various body parts. Most arteries transport oxygenated blood except the pulmonary artery. So remember how I said with the veins before, I'm just going to highlight this. In the veins, it says most veins transport deoxygenated blood except pulmonary veins. So veins think deoxygenated. Now over here, I'm going to highlight that too for you. It says most arteries transport oxygenated blood. So not deoxygenated, but oxygenated, except 
the pulmonary artery. And I'm going to make this image wider for you and bigger for you in a second where I'm going to explain. And then the pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs. Okay, so let me make this a bit bigger for you. Um, okay, that's not going to work. Let me copy this. <laughs> and move it over to the next slide for a moment. So I'm just going to add my page. There we go. Here we go. Make this a bit bigger. So remember how I talked about the left, the right side. I talked about the atrium, the ventricle. So pay attention to where these arrows are. And I explain step by step at the end. The aorta is this big thing right here. The superior vena cava is right here. The inferior vena cava is here. We talk a lot about the atrium and the ventricles. Um, we're not talking about the um, valves in this video. That's going to be another one. Um, but just to kind of show you guys the key points for now, look at where the ventricles are. Look at where the atriums are. So they're towards the top. The ventricles are towards the bottom. Look at the aorta. Look at the uh, superior vena cava and the inferior. But then remember, we just talked about the pulmonary veins and the pulmonary arteries. So I'm just going to go back to that one, one, one more time. When you think of veins, think of transporting deoxygen, deoxygenated blood. When you think of arteries, think about transporting oxygenated blood, except the pulmonary artery. And with the veins, it's except the pulmonary veins. Okay, so feel free to take a picture of this if you need help or um, to help you remember it more. Okay, moving on here. So again, so what is the difference between oxygenated blood and then deoxygenated? I have an image down here for you where it says deoxygenated blood from the body enters the right atrium and then the atria relaxed oxygenated blood from the lungs enters into the left atrium. But Oxygenated blood is rich in oxygen, allowing for energy production in body tissues. Very important. This flows from the lungs to the heart via the pulmonary veins before going through the body. And then pumped from the left ventricle into the aorta, reaching all body organs and tissues. But then what's the purpose of deoxygenated blood? Low in oxygen, leading to decreased energy available for body functions. Returns to the heart via the superior and inferior vena cava. Remember where those are after circulating through the body. Pumped from the right ventricle into the pulmonary artery towards the lungs for reoxygenation. And then, so this is another way that I've done it. I tell you exactly what happens. And then towards the end, I'm just going to kind of skip to that for one second to show you. I have arrows as well. So this might be easier for you to study here or after this like blue slide, I kind of go over a quick review where I show you arrows. So right now we're just going to do this and then I'll talk about the other one afterwards. So deoxygenated blood flow. Remember, we just talked about what deoxygenated blood is here, low in oxygen, all of that fun stuff. Okay, so deoxygenated blood flow, entry to the right atrium. So blood enters the right atrium via the superior and inferior vena cava carrying deoxygenated blood from the body. So blood enters the right atrium. This is what we're talking about here. So I just wanted to really reiterate that point. And then you have flow to the right ventricle. So blood flows from the right atrium to the right ventricle. So from and then to through the tricuspid valve preventing um, backflow um, during contraction. That's what a valve is for, prevents backflow. And then to just kind of review at the bottom here, blood moves into the right ventricle. And then ventricular contraction. The right ventricle contracts, pushing blood through to the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary artery, starting the journey to the lungs. Blood is pumped into the pulmonary artery. That's what's happening here. And then ready for oxygenation. So the blood is now ready to enter the lungs to release carbon dioxide. That's the whole point. And absorb oxygen, completing the deoxygenated blood flow cycle. Blood is now prepared for oxygenation. Now pulmonary circulation. 
um, ventricle contraction. So the right ventricle now contracts, creating pressure that pushes this deoxygenated blood into the pulmonary artery through the pulmonary valve and then blood flow through the valve. The pulmonary valve now opens during contraction, allowing blood to flow into the pulmonary artery, preventing backflow into the ventricle. Remember, that's very important to prevent the backflow. And then transport to the lungs. The pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood to the lungs, branching into left and right arteries for gas exchange. And then oxygenation process. In the lungs, deoxygenated blood enters the alveoli, ex exchanging carbon dioxide for oxygen, transforming the blood for systemic circulation. And then now we're talking about the oxygenated blood flow, return to the left atrium. Oxygenated blood returns from the lungs through the pulmonary veins. Four pulmonary veins carry oxygen rich blood to the left atrium. Flow to the left ventricle now. Blood flows from the left atrium to the left ventricle through the mitral valve, ensuring a one way flow and preventing backflow. Now prep for systemic circulation, the left ventricle contracts to build pressure, essential for pumping oxygenated blood through the aorta to the body. And then oxygen delivery, um, oxygenated blood exits the left ventricle into the aorta. Um, this moves the oxygen throughout the body to support metabolism. Last but not least, systemic circula um, circulation, 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 <laughs> left ventricle now. So oxygenated blood is collected now in the left ventricle, the heart's main pumping chamber, a must know, left ventricle, um, the heart's main pumping chamber. It contracts to propel the blood out of the heart. The aortic valve, as the left ventricle contracts, blood is pushed through the aortic valve. This one-way back, this one-way valve prevents blood, um, backflow and allows blood into the aorta. Blood now enters the aorta, the largest artery in the body, very important, which branches into smaller arteries, delivering oxygen-rich blood to various body parts. Now it goes throughout the body. So oxygenation, this blood travels through the systemic um, circulation, reaching tissues and organs, providing necessary oxygen and nutrients for cellular functions. So here's just kind of different images for you to kind of help you out as well to kind of see where things are going. And then you have over here, all of the main ones that you need to know. So again, the ventricles are on the lower chambers. The atriums are on the higher one. Pay attention to the vena cava, the superior and the inferior. And then it's just telling you what the, what, what the oxygenated blood and the deoxygenated blood is going to do. Now, I explained all of that, but maybe what I'm about to say is going to be a bit easier for you, where I have arrows. So when we're talking about deoxygenated blood flow, it goes from the body to the right atrium and then the right atrium to the right ventricle. Okay. So blood from the body enters the right atrium via the superior and inferior vena cava. So the main point here is the body to the right atrium, but then how? And then the right atrium to the right ventricle but then how? So the blood then, then flows from the right atrium into the right ventricle through the tricuspid valve. Okay. Now pulmonary circulation, the right ventricle goes to the pulmonary artery to the lungs. And then this is what's happening. So the right ventricle pumps blood through the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary artery, which carries deoxygenated blood to the lungs for oxygenation. And now it's in the lungs. The blood is now um, oxygenated. Now you have the oxygenated blood. What happens then? And it now goes from the lungs to the pulmonary veins to the left atrium. So oxygenated blood returns from the lungs to the left atrium via the pulmonary veins. And then the blood goes from the left atrium into the left ventricle through the mitral valve. And last but not least, now that it's in the left ventricle, this pumps oxygenated blood through the aortic valve into the aorta, which goes through the body. And then the body now delivers oxygen to the tissues. So have you noticed something? When you see a valve, it's then going to go into that certain part. So the aortic valve is now going into the aorta. 
if you go back. Notice how the valves all, always go into something. Um, see, the pulmonary valve is now going into the pulmonary artery. So valves always go into something. Pulmonary valve, pulmonary artery, the aortic valve, the aorta, and valves prevent backflow. So you guys, did that help to explain everything to you a little bit better? Here's just another fun video for you. Let me know if any questions, um, if you're in the Board Exam Prep Academy, you have this PowerPoint here for you inside with this video again to keep on listening to it. Um, this is kind of like a quick teaching video for you. I believe it was about 15 minutes. So this will help you understand the valve. And if you're in the board exam prep Academy too, make sure to go through your, your anatomy study guide, where we ask you questions, case studies, all of this to really test your understanding. So let me know if you guys have any other questions. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.